we're back. Rich Eisen Show Basketball uh, Podcast. We're here. It's Friday, May 5th. Cinco de Mayo. Congratulations. So happy celebrations to all those who partake. Adam is back in the house after missing last week. TJ is here. What up, what up, fellas? What's Yo, cracking? What's cracking? How are we feeling? TJ, game three. To, let's just jump right in. Woo! Game three tonight. Hopefully you guys can listen to this beforehand. If not, game three, Boston, Philly. What is going to happen? Because in game one, we have no Embiid, still shaken up. Mm-hmm. Philly long rest with their sweep of Brooklyn. Uh, Boston extended to six games against Atlanta. We come out and Harden takes over. 45 vintage Harden game. Yeah, man. Uh, it, was, it was kind of awesome to see as a fan of Harden. I, I like mm-hmm. James. I think he's a great player. Um, not necessarily against my team, but he had everything working. <laughs> yeah. Everything that was working back in the MVP days, the step back, he was getting to the basket, getting everybody involved. And then Embiid comes back in game two, not really sure he should have played, did shake the rust off, and then Boston shot the lights out uh, from three. Mm-hmm. Now what do you think is going to happen tonight? Because I'm kind of ready for anything. I have no idea what's going to happen. Tonight. Yeah, you know, first of all, let's give a shout out to our, our boy Kirk Morrison for sitting in last week uh, on the pod. Yeah, but that was nice. You know, the thing is, you you kind of said this before the last game. You're like, I actually think that you know we'll do better with Embiid in the game, yeah. and then you kind of broke down why you thought just because of defenses and rotations and stuff. And, and just I figured he was going to be a little rusty, a little rusty, and you, a little sloppy, and the, and the and the need to get him involved would kind of slow things down a little bit, which is what was so successful for them in game yeah. one, playing a quick pace. Maxi was out there. He was great. Tobias Harris was great. And Harden was doing his thing. That was kind of my vision there. Yeah, and, and, it, and it, it came to fruition. You know, I, I thought he played okay, you know, and, and I'm glad he did play just simply because, you know, at first the fan of me, the guy who was like, oh, I don't want to see him get hurt. I didn't want him to play because we had already stolen one game. Yeah. But then it's like, all right, for him to get that rust off a little bit, you know, just to get out there, you know, you – Whenever you hurt yourself, right, one of the biggest battles to come back from is mental, right? Yep. You you have to be able to trust that that body part that was hurt. Your your mind has to trust your body. So I'm glad he did get out there. He got a little run. Look, we got we got handled. It was it was a good game until halftime. Uh and in the third the quarter, third, you third guys quarter erupted for just, 35. Yeah. You know, but he he did well and and basically things that he did kind of solidified the reason why I think he was the MVP. Just because for everything Joker gives you offensively, he's not giving you what Joel's giving you on the defensive side. Joe had five blocks. Joe altered shots. Joe made guys kind of second guess if they wanted to drive down the lane. These are things that I believe make him the MVP. So now, you know, we took that L. You guys hit 23s. I can't see that happening again. And if it does, then guess what? Go ahead and get your finger measured for a ring because yeah. if you're going to do that, you're winning the title. Yep. So, look, Philly's going to be insane tonight. He's going to get the MVP trophy right. at home in front of those fans yep. against our most hated rivals who, you know, like Joe said, it's not really a rivalry in his career because he's, I think, 1-9 in nine in the playoffs against you guys. But over history, the Sixers-Celtics have been one of the best rivalries in the history of basketball. So I'm, I'm expecting, like, a great game. I'm hoping that Doc does make some adjustments and kind of look to see what worked in game one and what didn't work in game two. I don't know if he's going to make those adjustments, um, but I'm excited to watch this game. I haven't been this hyped for a game in a long time, and just a game that, like, him getting the MVP yep. with the crowd, with, mm-hmm. you know, everybody just turned up, the, you know, these go to 11. The Sixers have to win this game tonight. I really and truly believe Yeah, probably it. must win for the Sixers, Adam. I saw a great stat today. Sixers are shooting 41% from three at home in the playoffs. Celtics are 42% from three on the road. Wow. Do you think it's a simple thing as whoever makes more threes tonight is going to win? Not necessarily. If I'm the 76ers, especially Joel Embiid, you have to be very careful of having an emotional letdown after the big MVP announcement. I've noticed that in previous years, uh, a guy will win MVP and then – the team won't play that well right after. It's such a big event. Mm -hmm. So the Sixers have to be aware of that, that they're going to be so hyped going into the game. You have game three back in Philly. Everybody's so excited. Joel's getting his first MVP that these fans have been thinking he's deserved the last five years. So it's going to be crazy pregame. You just have to be able to maintain your composure and not let your emotions get the best of you. I think that's really important for the Sixers that they stay poised at the start of the game and don't let 
you know, the uh, the Celtics go on like a eight to two, ten to two type of run to start the game. Yeah, yeah, that's a really interesting point. It's I, I was I was trying to look up to see on the night so and so got their award how they did that night. Yeah, I, I was yeah. trying to I find that. I was trying too. to find that out. Like, do you remember? Did Denver win last last no year idea, in the playoffs? I, I I couldn't remember at all. Kevin Durant back in his day, uh, even Derrick Rose. I just can't remember what happened in those games. I was trying to find it, didn't, but that's a great point. It's going to be so nuts in there. Mm -hmm. Whoever's, I mean, I'm sure who's ringing the bell tonight. Do we know? Do we know? I'm sure it might be out there. I'm not sure. I mean, is Meek Mill, like, is somebody going to be? You know who's got to ring the bell tonight? The oh, doctor. Yeah. Great, great great you got to get Doc. You got to get AI. You yeah. got to get Mo-, Mo Cheeks or Bobby Jones or, oh, you know, one, one of those Matt guys. <laughs> I'm you trying know? to see if it's out there who's ringing the bell tonight. Actually, today's the 22nd anniversary of Iverson getting his MVP. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that makes perfect so sense. It, that it he would, would make sense for. So for maybe the, it is going to be. So, yeah, that's, that's a, or I think the emotional letdown is kind of a real thing tonight. If mm-hmm. Boston comes out, it's 10 2. You got to take a timeout. You gotta calm everybody down. That's kind of a real thing. Or they just come out smoking. It's yeah. seventeen to four, Philly to, to open the first quarter. Joe Missoula doesn't call a timeout because it's not what he does. I, I'm re- kind of ready for anything tonight. I, yeah. I, I'm looking for a big bounce back game from James Harden. I think he was two for fourteen from the field last game after an amazing game Let's one. Say. So yeah, he needs to step it up, and I think he yeah, will. You're right, two for fourteen. Uh, yeah. Also, the, the only time I can truly remember something going just really, really awful for a guy the day he got the MVP award was back in I think ninety, I want to say ninety five when David Robinson won over a came, and then a came went out worked him. and <laughs> made yeah. David Robinson look like a pedestrian basketball player, and he, as we know, was far from pedestrian, but a came just dominated. So. You know, other than that, I, I can't really remember, you know, but both what you guys are saying is valid. Yeah. You, know, you don't want the Sixers to get too high and right. have that adrenaline dump right. when the game starts. So, you know, you just got to be even kill. But also, you're looking for a bounce back game from Harden. Unfortunately, I'm preparing for a bounce back game from Jason Tatum, because right. as I said on the big right. show, if you were to tell me that we're going to hold Jason Tatum to seven games, I'm doing this in the win column. I'm going to put the check right One there. Field and goal. it didn't happen. One for seven. Three fouls. Got him into foul trouble early. Missing you know, and layups. Picked up his fourth yeah. really early in the third quarter. And the thing is, that's probably going to be the worst game he plays in the playoffs. Maybe if it's mm-hmm. playoff and career. They, and you yeah. guys got yeah. that yeah. W. So that worries me a little bit. Also, you, you got to expect you got to expect a little bit more from Embiid tonight. You got to mm-hmm. expect yeah. the rust has now been shaken off. You've had a day of practice. You're back at home. You're getting the award. You're going to be hype. You you kind of need 30 from him tonight if, if you're going to win this game and hold home court. Yeah, and another guy is uh, Tyrese Maxey is incredibly important. Looking at his last few games, he had 13 last game, but before that he had 26, 16, 25, 33. So he's been scoring he's a been lot. Really so nice, I expect... Yeah. Uh, if the Sixers to win, him to score 20-plus points and have some big three-pointers. And the thing, Brockman, you and I texted this the other day. The thing about Maxi is if everyone looks like they're running at, like, you know, 100%, Maxi's playing the game at, like, 125%. Maxie, He's just so I, fast. I don't know if you guys do this, but when I listen to podcasts, I listen at one and a quarter speed, one and a half speed, depending on if I'm trying to just breeze through it. And that's Maxie how Maxi looks plays. Like he plays at, like, <laughs> one and a half speed yeah. on a podcast speed. It, he is so fast up and down the court. I know we've been talking so much about uh, Deer and Fox and, and and other players who just get up and down the court so fast. I think we need to start talking about Maxi in that conversation. For sure, yeah. he's just such a good player. I really like watching him play. Uh, he needs a big night. I think. Yeah. I think you guys are gonna have to shoot the lights out. I think you're gonna need to make, you know, fifteen to twenty threes tonight to to, to to win this one, TJ. Well, also, we're going to need, like, I'm not good at math, you know this, but we got about, I don't know, maybe 27 points from our bench off the top of my head that I can think of. So our bench is definitely going to have to come a little bit more correct than they did last game, especially if Malcolm Brogdon's going to be hitting for 23 and, you know, Time Lord's doing his thing. I think he had 12 and 4 last game. So Philly bench, we we really need someone just to kind of step up and, and make a mark on our bench or else... You know we're gonna fall. We're gonna fall behind this series two games to one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, prediction time. Uh, let's see. They play tonight. They play this game. Plays Sunday. Yeah. They play Sunday. Yeah. When we come back on Monday, what is this series at? Two two. I agree. Two two. Two two. Does mm-hmm. Philly win tonight or do they win on Sunday? I think Philly wins 
Sunday. I think they have a little bit of a letdown tonight. Boston wins tonight, and then Philly gets the next game. All right, let's move on to the other game tonight that really hasn't been much of a series. Uh, Nugget, <laughs> Nugget Suns. I mean. Is there just – does does Phoenix have not enough – or does Denver have too much? You know, Chris, you this understand is, what I'm saying? This is a, a particular case where two things can be true. Okay. And mm-hmm. they are. Phoenix doesn't have enough. They were already playing like yeah. not, remember the other day I text you and I put nine greater than four? Yeah. I mean, the Nuggets are at least nine deep. The Suns were four deep, and now you've lost Chris Paul to that injury Huge that we all right. unfortunately knew, knew was, was gonna coming. come. Yeah. So now they gotta play with three guys essentially. So how does how does Phoenix win this game? You need thirty five apiece from Booker and Durant. You need eight and to get about twenty five. But where are the rest of these points gonna I know, come? That's still only ninety points. Yeah, and I just <laughs> hundred points. I honestly do do? just don't see any yeah. way. Like I think maybe the Suns win a game yeah. this series. But just to be honest with you, uh, there's just you know, like Mike Tomlin, you never say never, but never. I just don't see any way the Nuggets don't yeah, win this Adam, series. Yeah, Adam, I'm super worried that Denver's going to sweep here. Like, if I'm a Phoenix fan, I'm really worried about a sweep. Oh, when Chris Paul went down and I heard he was going to be out, that definitely entered my my head immediately. Where I was like, oh yeah, they could they could sweep them. Yeah. Like, the Phoenix was already so low on their depth to start, and now that you lose your your Hall of Fame point guard, granted he's not the same point guard he used to be, but he's still very important. That team is in a lot of trouble. You see Devin Booker and Kevin Durant playing 40, 45 minutes every single night. That's just not sustainable. These guys are going to be exhausted. They can't stop Jokic. I don't know what's wrong with Aiden. Like, he's a good defender, but he's not. He just can't. Hit, like, Jokic is working him right Nobody now. Nobody can well, handle Jokic. But it's is, really bad. Except for MB. Yeah, there's that clip <laughs> that's been going viral. So this game, by the way, I just, they last played on Monday. It's now that's so unfair, by the way, to the Lakers and Raiders, by the way. That's yeah. How are they making these schedules? Why do some teams get like two weeks off off. and and, and we get like 48 hours off? Yeah, if I'm LeBron James or Steph Curry, I'm upset about that because they have to play every other day. I know they've been playing every other day. Sixers Celtics have been playing every other day. This year, this year, four days off. Uh, Knicks Heat tomorrow, four days Mm -hmm. off. Uh, by the way, the Suns had one, two, three, four. Bench points. Ooh, four. Yeah, yeah. They only scored 87. For, for a team like that to only score 87 is uh, kind of a nightmare. Just going back to, to eight and real Walter quick. Davis's sons would never only score 87 is all I'm saying. <laughs> Shout out Tom Chambers. <laughs> uh, the clip that went, went viral this week of him just standing there while uh, Jokic was, just got a ton of rebounds yeah. like right in a row. And then I guess Aiton was like, what do you want me to do? Like foul him, do something. <laughs> not, just, not stand out of bounds. That's what you he do. Was, he was start out of bounds, he was under, out the of bounds under the basket. He has no spark. It seems like yeah. you know what I mean. Like there's no passion there with Aiden. And he's I've always liked his game. He's a talented player. He can rebound. He can defend. He can hit the good medium range open jumper. But he just seems like he's he's there's a mental block with him against Jokic. And I, I kind of get that, right? Yeah. I get that because Adam, sometimes you just know like Jokic. there's nothing I'm gonna do <laughs> to stop this guy, and it must be frustrating. But bro, you gotta do something. Gotta do something. You I mean, know how many, how many fouls did he have? Yeah, just yeah. do a dirty foul, honestly. At this point, why not? So what do you have to lose? He had Put five Jokic fouls. On his ass. Foul out. Like yeah, go on the bench something. then. At least hack him. Make <laughs> no, him do think something. Twice. Yeah, make him think twice. Give him a hard foul. Foul like they used to do in 90s basketball wasn't that the thing they used to say about curry like people were afraid to knock him down and when, to when this day they still, they still don't don't Ste- let me no tell you something curry hard. Steph curry should be for, you know we said on the big show today how at least for me how discerning it is that joel Embiid is on the ground all the time steph curry should be knocked down every time he drives yeah. a lane and people either just respect him too much to floor him well you're going to respect him so much you're going to find your butt sitting at home like uh, it doesn't make sense, uh, but I think Aiton just knows he's just outmatched. So we, you have we, to do something. Though. They got to do something. So we give Phoenix no chance, right? They're not going to win this series. No, no, I could see them winning like maybe one of these home games, then mm-hmm. probably Denver closing it out in five. Yeah, because look, there's still a man named Kevin Durant, right? Mm-hmm. And at some yeah, point, he's going to show him proven, yeah. you know, but it's going to take like a 40, like one of those Kevin Durant, this is going on the uh, Hall of Fame highlight reel games. He's going to have to have one of those ASAP or else, you know. So th- so 3-1 when we come back on Monday, most likely? I mean, Yeah, I'd say that. I think that's fair. All right, let's talk about what we saw last night. Uh, predictable, right? Warriors yeah. come back. I don't know, maybe not 
a 27 point game. Mm-hmm. Well, you but, can tell the Lakers kind of threw the towel in after. Yeah, I think point. LeBron had LeBron had a great start last night. I think we were all were expecting Anthony Davis to kind of come back down to earth, not in the way that he did, but LeBron was shooting threes. He's been shooting sub 20% in the playoffs lately from three. The last couple of months, he's been bad from the outside. He comes out banging threes. He hit that one at the shot clock that from like 30 feet. Yeah, off, the, bang, off the backboard. Yeah, yeah. they're like banked in. Uh, 21 in the first. LeBron only scored two in the second half. Uh, it was clear that Golden State was kind of cooking on all cylinders. There, got it up to 20 in the third quarter. You're like, all right, well, this game is over. Well, the game started out interesting. I thought it was going to be one of those games where LeBron just, you know, scored 45 yeah. or 50 points. It and felt then, like and then, it. Yeah, and it would go down to like the wire. It. And then it was close, I think, up until like the like four or five minute point of the second quarter. And then Golden 10. State made a nice little run. And then yeah. they, obviously they blew it open in the third quarter. But uh, yeah, no, I thought it was going to be an explosive, like, like legacy type of game for LeBron and, and it really didn't happen that way. Yeah, also, you know, in the post game presser, you had AD and LeBron sitting there and, and Anthony Davis said something to the effect like, Well, I took the same shots I took the game before. It's like and, and that was his excuse. Like, no, nah, bro, or? let me explain something to you. When you're as dominant as Anthony Davis, like you can't just like take eleven shots and be like, well, I did the same thing I did the game before. Like, nah, bro. Like, it, like right. it's time for you to be that number one pick. It's time for you to be that guy that everyone thought you were going to be. You have to be game one, AD, because what he did yesterday was just truly unacceptable. And I'm not a Laker fan, obviously, and neither are you guys. But if I'm a Laker fan right now, I'm pretty pissed off at the way this guy played last night. Well, I thought the Warriors made great adjustments in terms of uh, having Draymond Green guard him. And Draymond yes. Green was awesome yesterday. He was awesome yesterday. He had yesterday. one of his best games of the year. He almost had a yes. triple-double, played great defense on Draymond, was making the right reads on offense. Draymond, when he when he plays well, that team just goes on all cylinders. He's the key to that offense in a way. And him guarding, uh, him guarding AD made it tough on AD. And then obviously we have to talk about Jermichael Green. Yeah. That guy barely played, has played all playoffs. He comes in... Uh, Yesterday, I think he scored 15 points. Had a in bunch 13 of three, minutes, he had yeah, 15 points. Had a bunch of threes, so he was really important. And I, First four points of the game, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. Yeah, and hit a bunch of corner threes. So, uh, I, I, and another adjustment they made was uh, Steph Curry bringing the ball up more. In game one, they didn't do that as much, and it was tough for him to get the ball. And so in game two, he was the guy bringing the ball up more. So I thought Golden State made good adjustments. And it's going to be a tough decision for Steve Kerr to decide if they want to stick with this game two lineup again. Yeah. Obviously, uh, they said that Looney was dealing with some sort of illness, even though we played a little. But do you start Looney in game three, or do you just continue with this small ball type of lineup and have Draymond guard AD to start? That'll be a tough decision for Steve Kerr. Yeah, that's one, why he one, makes the big bucks. One mm-hmm. of the uh, quintessential, this is, this is what Draymond does. This is why you have him on your team. Mm. That's why... Gotta gotta think twice about breaking up the di- breaking up mm-hmm. the crew and think about bringing them back for just ride it out till they all go off into the sunset. You know, he he had a great game and yeah. you're just like man. Also, you this know the same does th- same thing with Tatum. Like if you go in that game and you're you know you go in the Lakers locker room and you say hey guess what I have a crystal ball and tonight Steph Curry's only going to score twenty points. You're thinking, all right, well, we're going to win this game. Yeah, we got a great chance to win this one. We're that not going to lose by 27. It's not the case. Also, because... it was one of the one of the clay nights. This oh, was, a, yeah. this and remember, was a I said that I think night. on the big show, I was like, you you know, Clay's clay back. needs one of those nine, ten, three point games, yeah. which he's very capable of. He had eleven. He had eight. He was eight of eleven last night. Broken. Last you know, night, and man. It, man, you know that what, there was one play where he was in the corner and Draymond threw him the pass, and Clay might be the best in the world at catch and mm-hmm. shoot like. Caught the ball, didn't dip it, didn't dip, caught it, just here, went up, bam. bam. And it's just like, uh, yeah. you can't defend that. There's nothing you could do. When Clay Thompson is on, I don't know how you beat this team. Yo, I had this in a what's more likely that we didn't get to on the big show today because I had a couple of hoops ones. I had it as a warrior you'd want taking the final shot for your life, Steph or Clay. I've always said, shot for my life, one, give me Clay. Okay, for well, my life. Give me well, Clay. Well, I don't know if you, I mean, depending on the day, you might be dead. I'm taking Steph 101 out of 100 times on that one, without I, question. I just love, I just love, I love Clay. Clay. I'm going I love, Clay. I love Clay so much. 
Are we dead? We might be dead, Adam. You guys might be Shot dead. Shot for my life. Give me Clay. I'm going to be sitting there eating popcorn going, I hope, I hope this works out for y'all. <laughs> if it's game six, Clay, then we're living, baby. Game six, Clay, we're alive. Yeah, we're alive. But it could game be two, game Clay. whatever, Steph, and game I'm living. Two, Clay. Like, I'm, I'm like Pearl Jam. I'm still alive. Some days Steph just doesn't have it. I know. Some days Clay doesn't have it. But. So Steph was three of five from three last night. So, you know. Another guy that's so frustrating in the Warriors is Jordan's pool. pool. This, pool. this guy drives me nuts. <laughs> Imagine being his teammate or being oh, a fan. I said, I tweeted yesterday that I'm not shocked that Draymond, like after watching him, I'm not shocked that Draymond punched him in the face <laughs> before the season. Like the guy is frustrating, frustrating. to watch. Yeah. Like you said, he's got to be frustrating to play with. He yeah. has obviously uh, a uh, lot of talent. talent. Yeah, he's crazy talented. Some of the moves he makes are incredible, but some of the decisions, some of the wild drives to the lane are just don't even make sense. He just needs to calm down a little. And, and I think the Warriors are regretting signing him to that deal. $35 million a year for the next four years. Come on. That's a lot of scratch. I think scratch. they messed up with that, yeah. Shout out to Poole for, a, you want to pay me how much? Yeah, come on. Yeah. Just, <laughs> Who's got a pen? Sorry. Who's got Who's a got pen? Anybody, anybody? <laughs> the, fu- the funny thing is if Jordan Poole is playing like this and his contract expired after this year, I don't think he gets more than maybe 16, 17 a year. Oh, no chance. He, I mean, but he, he's Timing there. is everything, boys. And, and Timing is everything. And that's kind of the thing, too, with like, Kind of what Ramona Shelburne said on the big show today. You see how some of these young guys have played this playoffs, and you're like, well, maybe they're not ready to take over the reins from this from, yeah. from these guys. Maybe we do need to bring Draymond back and just keep running this back until until you can't until the wheels fall off. You know, this is you know has nothing to do with nothing, but it just kind of popped into my head. You know how everyone always gets on Kevin Durant and says, well, Kevin Durant had to go and play with the team to beat him to win, and they always kind of knock Durant for those two titles. You know what no one ever, ever says? They don't, no one ever goes, well, Steph, if he didn't have Durant, wouldn't have those two rings. No one ever brings up that case, and maybe they would, but I'm going to tell you what. I don't believe that they win two championships if Kevin Durant isn't on that team, and that no one ever it's always like KD gets knocked but the Warriors kind of for some reason well don't because get they won 73 without him and true, they, but, you didn't, Steph, but you didn't win a championship that's true. but they did they've won two without him though yeah but we uh, talking about the 73 win is what yeah. I'm saying so I don't know maybe maybe they would have but I, I don't know and I'm just saying I'm just saying that that's just an argument that you never hear anybody you make. never hear you want to know why because we like Steph Curry yeah, but why don't we like Kevin? I love Kevin Durant because I love basketball. That's all Kevin Durant wants to do. He don't care about nothing I think but playing basketball. Here, here's why we people don't like Kevin Durant. I, I like Kevin Durant. It's because he has the burner accounts. He fights with people on Twitter. Yeah, but we all do too. Not burner accounts. You've got a burner. Stop it. <laughs> but I'm out there defending myself on Twitter. <laughs> you might be. I don't know. <laughs> We know you're definitely reading the comments, TJ. We know that. No one cares. <laughs> I don't have no, Twitter, so no how am I reading comments? That's true. Good point. But I just, YouTube. You know, some people we just like. Some people we just don't like. Why A-Rod gets slammed in the media because we don't like him. We think he's a phony. We love Big Poppy though. Like, we, some people we just like. Some people we just don't like. I, but I don't think that we people don't like Durant. I feel like because he sticks up for for himself people have an issue no, but it's pe- like I don't yeah you're right I don't think it's that people don't like him I think people love to troll him because they know they're going to get a response, response. and, and that's what chance. that's all yeah. people want I think yeah. how many times just and for you and I Chris you don't really get this Adam yeah. because but like how many times you and I people have talked trash about us and then we say something back and, and they get oh man I was just joking you guys are cool oh like, man you responded that's yeah. awesome so people are very weird about mm-hmm. that like you're right they do want a response and they know that they can get it out of him because he's just not gonna you know he's not gonna put up with the BS so I don't know it's just like I said that just I just took that quick detour just because that had been in my mind for a while. And maybe someone in the comments could tell us why that maybe... People don't like Kevin Durant? Well, why the Warriors don't get any kind of shade, but Durant Durant gets all the shade, you know? Do we want to put an asterisk so Steph Curry and Clay only have two rings? No, definitely not. I'm just saying just just as a talking point, you just never hear anybody bring that up. Yeah. Well, I guess the, the point is that a lot of people contend that he couldn't get it done with OKC, and that was really his team. He had to jump ship, whereas it. Steph Curry, it's always been Stay his there. team, yeah. and he had somebody join but him. When you but when you jump ship and you are the best player on the team. So like, like LeBron. 
for two years. LeBron jumped ship, joined Dwayne Wade's team. Yeah. But LeBron was the best player on those two those teams, yeah. right? So, so we discount his two rings too? No. But again, there's another case. No one ever holds that yeah, against D Wade. You know right. what I mean? Right. But you can hold that. I don't know. It's just, I guess people are going to think whatever they want to think and they're going to say whatever they want to say. And I think the majority of these guys just simply don't care what, yeah. you know, what game the outside th- Game three of this series tomorrow in LA, probably the biggest Laker game in years, mm-hmm. I think, unquestioned. Does Jack come back? Does Jack Nicholson come back? I think so. What I do think you think? I think, it, I think yeah. we're going to see everybody tomorrow. Yeah. That's going to be the best ticket in town. I mean, look, Jack is, I guess. He load managed all season <laughs> for two years. For t- yeah, two years. For two years. So now the playoffs are here. Yeah, he's going to show up and play when the games matter. You know. I mean, when we're going to see Leo Denzel. We're going to see. Everybody. Did you see the video of Larry David and Jack kind of meeting before the game and shaking hands and being like, "What's up?" I don't know if you guys saw that. I love, that, that, Jack, I love that Jack was just taking pictures with everybody. Like yeah. Mc, McMenamin, like Rachel Nichols, like everybody was Instagramming out their own fit, photo that they took with. Jack. It was kind of cool because you it heard these stories cool. that that Jack was was dealing with dementia and he was essentially a recluse and all of a sudden you see him at the game shaking hands with lebron like you said larry david it's It's like no i'm here baby i've just been chilling but i'm here like i like that when we come back on monday what's the series who wins tomorrow i'm gonna say just a one-off so so last night was a one-off for the lakers and they get it back together or is golden state figured it out i'm gonna say we have a two-two well there's only one game tomorrow oh what am i saying yeah Yeah, um yeah I think the Lakers are going to win tomorrow. And then they play Monday night. Yeah, I think the La- I think we have 2-1 going into Monday. Lakers up. Oh, I, mm. I think Golden State wins tomorrow. I you think they, I think they Now, I, I I do I think the Lakers do get this game at they home. Do? Yeah. Yeah. AD back to life a little bit. He better. He's yeah. kind of every other game. He better. He's on an every other game kick. I think LeBron has a monster game. Another guy who I, I could see having a big game for the Lakers that could be key, who's hasn't he hasn't played that well in this series is Austin, Austin Reeves. Reeves. Yeah, I can see Austin Reeves getting a twenty point game and and really uh, igniting the crowd. Last so night, he's the type of guy that's important. Early on, it looked like it was gonna be the Rui night. Yeah, I mean, he, he had twenty one. He was stroking early. It was him and LeBron kind of keeping that game close until you know late second quarter. And lastly, do we care about Nick's Heat? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You do? Yeah. yeah. You find those games interesting? Oh yeah, you don't. Really? I'm I'm not compelled by that series at all. Why not? I'm not sure. I I don't know if it's the lack of star power. Even though, obviously, Randall and Brunson and Don, those guys are stars. I just I don't know. I I kind of just expect Miami to just roll through these guys and win in five games. Well, is. Jimmy Butler is health okay? Do we know what's? I mean, he's gonna play. I I don't know if he's gonna be, you know, Butler. I'm intrigued with the series just because of the Knicks fan base. Their fans are. Have you guys seen these videos of their fans after they're the games? Psychos. They're psychos. They've had such a lack of success the last twenty years that like every playoff win is like a championship for like any other like, you know, uh, teams fans. So that intrigues me. I think in Miami there's gonna be a ton. Of New Yorkers that make the trip down oh, there really? for the weekend. Oh, oh yeah, I bet there's going to be almost forty percent Nick fans down there, and it's, that's what, the way it, it used to be back in the day, if you remember. So they put that game's tomorrow. So Nick's Heat is a let's see a three thirty Eastern, and then a night game here in LA after. There's it's an insane weekend. The Formula One is in Miami this week. Like it's kind of a monster sports weekend in Miami. So I think people I mean, people are going to show out. They might. I wonder if they do the white. I do like the Miami whiteout. That's pretty standard for the for them, right? Yeah, for the yeah, playoffs. The whiteout, yeah. Yeah, for the playoffs. I don't know. I'm just. I, I weirdly think neither of these teams have a chance to win the title. So I'm just like, kind of. This is the redheaded stepchild of the playoffs. But right it now. should matter for you if you assume that the Celtics are going to win this round because that's your opponent. You got to scout your opponent. I, I understand. And again, I. I the Celtics did not play well against the Knicks this year, and obviously we know the Heat hit playoff history in the last decade. I don't want any part of the Heat. I don't want any part of the Heat. I don't want no part of it. I want no part of the Jimmy Butler experience. No. <laughs> no Jimmy Buck experience. He, like, single-handedly beat the Bucks. One of the greatest playoff performances I've ever seen. It was incredible. Coach Buck got fired yesterday. Did they pick Looks- up Nick Nurse, by the way? Is that the move for the Bucks? 
I, I I think that's an easy decision to make. I, I think I would do that. I don't think that's the route they're going to go. You think it's going to be Frank Vogel? I don't know. I think I heard something about maybe an assistant coach that's on the staff. Maybe they they they, oh, they hire oh. internally. Maybe I don't I don't know. It's just kind of weird. Need some new ideas. Three out of the last four championship winning coaches are uh, lost their job. That's kind of strange yeah. to me, right? If you throw an Ime Udoka, that's four. You know. A team that was in the finals. It's four out of five. It's tight lease on these coaches. Unbelievable. It's kind of wild. You know, uh, Simmons was talking this morning about maybe Doc Rivers to to uh, the Bucks if the Sixers lose this round. What Why you would you do that if you're the Bucks? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't right. know. It's a new voice. It's someone with experience. Yeah, but look at your team. You you didn't have a guy with experience, and you know. You, I know, and and it's been kind of a roller coaster the last like three months. Oh, that's true. We uh, lost more more games as double digit favorites than like anybody ever. <laughs> we lost to the Rockets. Okay. I bet the Bucks kind of regret that Ime Odoka signed with the the Rockets, and he didn't just wait a little more time because oh, he could have been a great coach for them. He was a great coach for you. He was the toughest guy on our team, and he was the head coach. <laughs> and now you have to, if you're him, you have to deal with the talented Houston Rockets team, but that team is so dysfunctional. It's an AAU team. He's going to have to coach an AAU team next year. I mean, year. they were talking about trading Jalen Green. Did I see that? He might be. Uh, <laughs> I think they're all on the. On he's the, like dangled yeah. out there. They're trying to make moves. Yeah, that team. I felt bad for their old, old coach because apparently yeah, it was just chaos know. in the locker room there. Yeah. Well, look. I hope he may learn how to speak French because he might need it. <laughs> well, he might need to know I mean, French. Okay. He's coming. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Bonjour. Jean Appel when is, uh, When's the lottery? When's the the draft? The picks? The, the That's the usually the during the finals, isn't it? Usually is it during the. Uh, I think it's it usually during like the Western Conference or Eastern Conference. Let me check. It might be Conference Finals week because that's coming soon. We're gonna know. Oh, the hype Killer is too. Tuesday, May sixteenth. Oh, baby. Oh. Two weeks. Wow. Not even. Let's go. He oh, just okay, needs to know un, deux, trois. Un, deux, trois. Cat sang set, huit, neuf, dix. I just <laughs> learned French, you know, bone up on it, just in case Crown Vic heads there. Bonjour. <laughs> Jean right, uh, what about this series? You guys like Knicks or Heat coming out of this? It all depends on Butler, really. Yeah, that's what you I was know, it, it, If he got the, that Patrick Mahomes stem cell treatment in, yeah. in his ankle, then maybe. If his ankle's jacked, then... You know, Jalen Brunson, man, just he's nice. I like him. There he's not spectacular, but man, he's I cannot if I'm a Nick fan, I probably have a shrine built to Jalen Brunson mm-hmm. because he's just a fun guy to watch. He's not big. He doesn't run particularly fast, he doesn't jump particularly high, but he just gets the job done. And I can see why he's a fan favorite in the garden. Yeah, just, he's a winner. He won he won in winner. high school. Yeah. He won yeah. I think college. twice in college. So yeah, yeah, the guy knows how to get it done. I've just seen this movie over and over again with Miami. They just figure out a way to win. They really do, mm-hmm. though. They figure out a way to win these series where they shouldn't. With, well, they with just probably see- the most underrated coach maybe uh-huh. in NBA history. He's going to the Hall, yeah. of-, going to the Hall of Fame. I was going to say that. When, when he first was with the Heat, people were criticizing him when they lost against the uh, the Mavericks, and he was on the chopping block, and then he's, he's there 13 years later, still oh, considered one of the best coaches in the league. All right, we do this every uh, – let's end on this. We do this every time. What, what are the finals? On May 5th, your finals prediction is? Uh, here's the deal before we answer this. I bet you if you go back, every time this question's asked, yeah, we change. have a different answer. That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, well, guess what? Situations and scenarios change week true to that, week. True that. All right, so I'm going to go Sixers Nuggets. I'm going to go Sixers Nuggets as well. Really? Yeah, I think the Sixers have this series. I don't know why I just did. Because here's the deal. I love Big man basketball, right? Man but basketball. I love the big fellas and the fact that the game is kind of shifted toward away from the big men. I just like two big bulls down low, putting shoulders just in each banging. other, banging each other around. Like I, I want to see Joker and, and Embiid go at it in the finals. Oh, I there'd be something be personal there with the MVP talk all this year. You have the the winner who who is Embiid, obviously going against Jokic, who a lot of people thought should be the winner. The thing so. is, like, Embiid should have won last year, and Joker maybe should have won this year. I don't know if I agree with that, though. I think Nuggets had the best team, best record yeah, La- but, last year, well, because yeah. Joker. But, but again, think about what no I said during the big year. show. Embiid, with even with a bad knee, 
five blocks, the things he brings defensively that don't get measured when people break out their analytics as to why Joker should win. You're not thinking about like the fact that like, okay, I'm not going to drive down the lane because Embiid's there or, you know, I'm not going to, you know, like defensively, he just is just that much better than Joker. He's a point center, though, Joker. It's crazy. That's fine, but you got to play both sides. And, I, and I'm sure someone will give me some analytic, well, there's a plus minus or blah, blah, blah with Joker. I can just go by what the eye sees right right now just off the top of her head because we don't have these stats in front of me. And I just know that Joe defensively just eye test to me, he, he, that, that's where he separates himself from Joker. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm too close to it, but that's just how I feel. Yeah. Who do you have? Well, I'm, I'm just going to stick with Celtics Nuggets. They're the two best teams, and usually over a seven-game series, the two best teams make it. Um, I don't know. We'll see. That being said, the finals are going to be the New York Knicks against the Golden State Warriors. Yes. <laughs> what, what would be the least watched finals? Would it be Heat Nuggets? <sighs> yeah. Like, yeah. if you're one of these, if you're the exec at ABC. Well, if you're ESPN, ABC exec, you want the, the, the Knicks-Lakers. That's the final. I understand. That you, you want Knicks-Lakers. You, that's South, what you, you want. You want Celtics-Lakers. That's what you want, yeah. right? If, what's the least, what's what's the matchup where you're like, Jesus Christ. I, I think if if I'm at ABC and my job's on the line and I see that it's. Nuggets-Heat. Nuggets-Heat, I'm probably like, ooh. Or ooh. Heat-Suns could be another. Oh, Heat-Suns. Yeah. Yeah, they're just like, ugh. All right. <laughs> Let's end on that. You know, here's uh, the thing with this podcast, which I love. You know, we're, we're just fans of the game, and we are, we're not going to ever deep dive too much in the analytics. It's just, oh, you know, watching and, and going through feel, and, and, and that's what I like ball. about this, you know. We just talk ball. All right, enjoy the games tonight. Go Sixers. Weekend. Go Celtics. No, go Sixers. Go Bulls. Sorry, Adam. Oh, wow. How dare you? Well, he's not a Bulls fan anymore anyways. What? (laughs) (laughs) 1.7%, I think, to get Victor. Let's go. Love you guys. Peace out. Later.